Melissa, so setting seller expectations, you know, part of what you do, some people may not know is you, aside from representing buyers purchasing, you can also represent sellers. It's a separate side of the transaction. Same thing, how there's a buyer's agent and a listing agent. So setting sellers expectations when you're working with them is, is, is a really big deal. And it's super important. What are some things that you're yeah. seeing happening right now? <laughs> It's, it's crazy right now, Emilio, and I think really um, sellers need to be prepared first and foremost that as soon as you put your house on the market, provided it's priced right, and it's, you know, the house that most people want, you know, there's some one-offs where maybe it's overpriced or the layout just doesn't work for many people, but the yeah. average seller right now, I mean, you can turn, speak to the turn times better than I, but they're putting their house on the market and it is selling very, very quickly. So I find that a lot of sellers may not have all the information that they need because they feel like, oh, well, we'll just put it on the market and then we'll get all the information and we'll get ready to sell and we'll understand the sale process as we go through it. Well, things are happening at a breakneck speed and I'm finding more and more that sellers are seemingly unprepared. And I think it's because they're maybe not having the conversations with their realtors or their attorneys or the professional people around them in advance of the listing. Because I really think once you put it on the market, things are usually going to move pretty quick. First and foremost, you should have legal representation if you're selling. You have an advocate if you're buying. You have a listing agent if you're selling. Why wouldn't you hire an attorney to represent you in your sale? This is someone who's going to draft your legal documents, You know, work with you if you have any questions, if any negotiation points come up that you feel as though you need sort of background on, maybe your agent is saying, hey, there's some language that needs to be drafted into the sales agreement that I cannot draft as an agent because I'm not an attorney. You know, if you're just spitballing or if you're letting the buyer's attorney dictate that language, it may not be as protective to you as the seller. And you're in the driver's seat because right now we are still in such a hot seller's market. It doesn't make sense for sellers to give it away, but you really need to understand the expenses of the sale as well right, Emilio, I can't tell you how often we see this where the seller has no idea what's involved in the cost to sell the property. They think, oh, well, I'm just paying the commission and that's the extent of it. And even at that, sometimes they forget, although usually they understand it. So really understanding what's involved in the cost of selling is I think so crucially important because you want to know what your net bottom line is. And more importantly, don't you want to know, don't you want to have your expectations managed as a client, what you're going to walk away with so that you know what your buying positions are going to be or reinvesting positions are? I mean, why look at the gross number when the gross number kind of doesn't matter? I mean, it matters because it's all related to the net, but you really need to understand the net numbers. I hear from clients, I don't want to sell unless I know I have somewhere to go. Well, I get that, but you're not going to get that offer accepted unless people are comfortable that your house is going to sell. Now, again, as long as you have it, you know, priced right, you have an agent position, maybe you haven't officially put it on the market. But if that's the case, you have to be really comfortable with not going in with a contingency, because from what I'm hearing, very, very few offers are being accepted with a contingency of a Hubbard or a house to still sell. If it's already under contract, that's one thing. And I've been talking with agents, Amelia, who are telling me that People who are buying and also have something to sell are not even making it a contingency and really now have to run the risk and gamble that they're going to get it under contract within enough time for them to be able to simultaneously purchase. And if not, then they're in breach. They could be forfeiting a deposit. There's a lot of really scary risks about doing a simultaneous buy and sell. So again, you know, as setting those seller expectations, if you're selling and simultaneously buying all the more reason that you need to have, you know, a powerhouse attorney behind you to help you understand the way the puzzle pieces fit together and an agent that is intimately familiar with those details as well. Even the way the money's getting exchanged needs to be worked out. Those are logistical details. 